Hello friends this is Dr Pankaj Kumar your mentor and in today's sessions of uh, cell reproduction we are going to talk about mitosis I am sure some of you might have studied about mitosis in your earlier classes Now mitosis is such a division in which the two daughter cells are going to be formed right and both daughter cells are going to have equal number of chromosome okay and the very purpose of mitosis is a growth repair as well as the general reproduction and this is going to occur in case of somatic cells right so first of all what is the best material for the study of mitosis the answer is root tip now why root tip is the best material because you see in case of tip portion there is a meristematic tissue and meristems are the site of active cell division that is why this is the site but why root the root is preferred because root don't have any natural pigments right and the chromosome is actually being stained by some coloring material like acetocarbon so if we take such material in which there is a no natural pigment so there is a no infringement among the chromosomes and the other material so that's why we prefer such a material in which there is no natural pigment and root tip become the automatic choice so that's why root tip is the best material for the study of chromosome right now let's talk about the stages of mitosis we divide mitosis in two part what we call the karyokinesis and cytokinesis the karyokinesis further divided into prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase right and as far as uh, uh, cytokinesis is concerned uh, we know very well that is the division of cells so later we will discuss in very detail about it right so before starting let's talk about first of all interphase now interphase is the stage prior to m phase even in the cell cycle we have discussed about that that interphase is a phase where the dna is going to duplicate the proteins are going to be synthesized that is required for the actual cell division so earlier we have seen that in case of cell cycle we have divided the interphase into g1 s and g2 phase all these three constitute the interphase so it is the longest phase right uh, approx 90% of the cell cycle constitute the interphase okay and we know very well that metabolically it is the most active phase and why metabolically is the most active phase because both the catabolic as well as anabolic activities are very very active in this stage that's why we are calling metabolically the most active stage chromosome in this particular stage is going to appear as a thin thread like right have a look at this diagram so this will give you a very clear idea right so you can clearly see that chromosome is going to appear as a thin thread like a structure okay nuclear membrane and nucleolus is absolutely intact so from here the very process of cell division is going to begin and let's begin with the prophase now for our convenience what actually we do we divide prophase in two part what we call early prophase and second what we call late prophase now in case of prophase what happens the condensation of the chromosome is going to happen now why condensation is important why it is required because you see in cell only those activities are going to happen where less energy is consumed and condensation is one of the prerequisite that uh, the energetically it is required for the cell so that's why for cell division the chromosome need to be condensed so prophase is primarily known for the condensation of the chromosome so here what happens the chromosome condenses and as a result of condensation what will happen it will split into the form of chromatids as you can see in the diagram right mind it in case of early prophase what we see that nuclear membrane and nucleolus is intact as you can see in the diagram so as we move from early prophase to the late prophase one of the important event that is going to happen and that is the very formation of the spindle fiber you can see in the diagram as well that all the spindle fibers are going to be formed right and these spindle fibers are attached to the centromere and within the centromere there is a structure called kinetochore where actually it is attached okay so the very feature of the late prophase is that the chromatids are randomly distributed you can see there all these chromosomes are randomly distributed right nuclear membrane and nucleolus is going to disappear okay and the spindle fibers are going to be formed right so these are the important features for the late prophase so mind it 
the disappearance of nucleolus and nuclear membrane, formation of spindle fiber, these are the two key features for the late prophase, right? Let's move and uh, let's talk about the metaphase. Now, in case of metaphase, what happens that all the chromatids or chromosome, they arrange themselves at a equatorial plate. Now, you see, equatorial plate not, is not actually the plate-like structure. It is a hypothetical structure, what you can see over there. So, that is a structure. This is what we call equatorial plate. And here, all the chromatids are going to arrange themselves. Okay. Now, what you see, this metaphase is considered the best stage for the study of chromosome. Why? Because here, the chromosome is maximally condensed. So, maximum condensation of chromosome is going. And since it is a maximally condensed, we can clearly see over that. Okay. And uh, uh, what happens? We can clearly see that there are two types of spindle fiber. And what these fibers are? One what we call a uh, discontinuous fiber. Now, what are the fiber that is discontinuous? The fiber which is attached to centromere, this is what we call discontinuous fiber. You can see in the diagram. So, here what we see that this fiber is actually attached to the centromere. Right. So that's why we are calling it a discontinuous fiber. Now there is a, another fiber. What happens? And that fiber is not attached to the centromere. Right. So these fibers are actually called as a continuous fiber. So we can see the two types of fiber, continuous fiber and the discontinuous fiber. Right. Let's talk about anaphase. In case of anaphase, what happens? That first of all, the centromere is going to split. And once the centromere split or divide, then the chromatids are going to move to the two respective pole because the spindle fiber is going to contract and as a result of contraction it will start moving and the chromatids is going to assume a v-shape now mind it this shape is actually depend upon what type of chromosome we are talking about if it is a metacentric it is a v-shape if it is a telocentric it could be l-shape right so depending upon the very position of the centropeal, the different shapes what we observe over there. For metacentric, we can say that there is going to have a V safe structure. Okay. So eventually, what we see, chromatids move to their two respective poles. That what we see in case of the anaphase, and it is of the shortest duration. Right. Now, before we move, let's talk about one very interesting thing: what we call anaphasic movement. So, what are the sequence of movement that is going to happen? There is a diagram in front of you where you can see that there is a red color chromatids. I have just shown one single chromatids and there are two fibers which I have spoke about. One, the continuous fiber. Second is the discontinuous fiber. So the first thing is going to happen that is the division of the centromere like this. So the centromere is going to divide. And after division of the centromere, what will happen that the discontinuous fiber, they are going to pull the chromatids to the two respective poles right so they will start pulling to the two respective poles okay so once they pull what will happen that the two continuous fiber will come to meet to each other so since they are like pole and once they are like pole they migrate to the center and they form an interjonal fiber as you can see in the diagram so altogether what we see that the three types of fibers are actually being present the continuous fiber, the discontinuous fiber, and the interjonal fiber. And all these three types of fibers actually uh, generate three types of forces. For instance, if you talk about the continuous one, that elongates, right? And they generate a pushing force. The discontinuous, that contracts, that generate a pulling force because this was uh, attached with the centromere. And finally, the interjonal fibers. They come in the center, they also elongate and they generate a pushing force so that the chromatids should move to the two respective poles. So that is going to happen in case of the spindle fiber, right? Finally, telophase. You know, telophase is a phase which is just reversed to the prophase. So whatever we have seen in case of prophase, here we will see exactly opposite to that. So in case of prophase, what we have seen, condensation here, decondensation of the chromosome is going to occur. As a result of decondensation, what will happen? That chromosome is going to appear as a thin thread-like structure, longer structure, right? There we have seen nuclear membrane, nucleolus disappear. Here what we have seen, nuclear membrane and nucleolus reappear. In case of prophase, what we have seen, spindle fibers are formed. Here, spindle fibers disorganizes, right? So, at the end, what we see, 
the two daughter nuclei are going to be formed, right? And these two daughter nuclei is going to have equal genetic material. Have a look at this diagram. So this will give you a very clear idea. So these are the two daughter nuclei that is going to form having a, a same number of chromosome. So that is the very philosophy of mitosis, right? Now let's talk about cytokinesis. Now cytokinesis is what? That is a division of the cytoplasm, right? So here what we see that uh, in case of plants and animals, there are cytokinesis is going to follow the two different pattern. So let's first of all talk about the plants. In case of plants, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi body and the interjunal fiber, they together form one structure, what we call phragmoplast, right? Have a look at this. So this is the phragmoplast that is formed in the center. So now this phragmoplast will start moving towards the periphery, right? And they elongate. And once they join the periphery, now the structure is what we call cell plate. So here the pattern is from the center to the periphery. That's why we say the development is centrifugal. And once the cell plate is formed, the two cells are going to separate from each other. So this is how the cytokinesis is going to occur by the formation of cell plate, right? In case of animal, the condition is different. In case of animals, what will happen? That there is a midbody. And midbody, what they will do? They will start attracting the membrane from both sides. And as a result, cell furrow is going to be formed like this. You can see there, there is a formation of the cell furrow. Okay. So here, the pattern is centripetal. Why? Because it is moving from periphery towards center. So that's why the movement, the formation of the cell furrow or the, the pattern of cytokinesis is actually centripetal. So in case of plant, the cytokinesis is going to occur by the cell plate. In case of animal, it is going to occur by the cell furrow. Right? Let's talk about the significance of mitosis. We know very well that uh, at the end of mitosis, we are going to get two daughter cells and uh, both two daughter cells are actually identical to the mother cell. So both have the same chromosome. But besides that, they play an important role in growth. We know very well that mitosis is required, that cell will divide and eventually the organ is going to grow. They also help in the repair of the tissue because this is the only way through which by the growth, if there is going to have any damage, that is the repair work that is going to be carried by the mitotic cell division. It is a part of asexual reproductions, right? And finally, uh, it also helps in the maintaining the genetic stability. Why? Because the daughter cells are going to have the same number of chromosome what the mother cells has. So they have some sort of chromosomal continuity, right? So that's all as far as the mitosis is concerned. But before I end the sessions, I would like to discuss very important questions. So have a look at these questions. So we have already discussed mitosis is best studied in the root tip and why? Because in case of root tip, what happens? They don't have a natural pigments. We have a discussion on that. Now, this is an interesting question. What is the number of mitotic division to form 100 cells? And the answer is 99. Now, how the answer is 99? For this, let's try to say this. Suppose there is a one cell. And if I ask you that what is the number of division required to form two cells? You will say one like this. If I say that what is the number of division required to form three cells? So out of these two, one of these is going to divide like this. So three cells, two divisions. If I extend the argument to four, again, there is going to have a three divisions, right? So the vertical line is going to show the number of divisions and the number of cells you can clearly see. Them. So in the given diagram, what we see that uh, uh, four cells are formed, but total number of division is three. So every time the number of division is one less than the, the number of actual cells. So that's why we can easily give a formula for it that number of mitotic division is equal to n minus 1 where n is the number of cells, right? So that's all as far as mitosis is concerned. Do join me in the next sessions where we will be talking about the reductional division that is meiosis, right? Thank you.